Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to this 87th episode of TempleCast. I'm Jim Gennati, pastor of Temple of United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. I hope you and yours are doing well as we continue to navigate our way through this pandemic. COVID has recently touched my household. Everyone is fine here now and rocking those COVID antibodies. We continue to practice the COVID mitigation strategies that we've grown to know and not really love all that much. But hey, it is reality for now. Today we're sharing readings and prayer for Wednesday, April 21st. Beginning with this prayer of morning resolve from the Episcopal Diocese of Delaware. I will try this day to live a simple, sincere, and serene life, repelling promptly every thought of discontent, anxiety, discouragement, impurity, and self-seeking, cultivating cheerfulness, magnanimity, charity, and the habit of holy silence, exercising economy in expenditure, generosity in giving, carefulness in conversation, diligence in appointed service, fidelity to every trust, and a childlike faith in God. I will try to be faithful in those habits of prayer, work, study, physical exercise, eating, and sleep, which I believe the Holy Spirit has shown me to be right. And as I cannot, in my own strength, do this, nor even with a hope of success attempted, I look to Thee, O Lord God, in Jesus my Savior, and ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here is a reading from Psalm 138. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, or discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk into me, and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head, They weigh like a burden too heavy for me. My wounds grow foul and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All day long I go around mourning, for my loins are filled with burning, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am utterly spent and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. O Lord, all my longing is known to you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my affliction, and my neighbors stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek to hurt me speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like the deaf I do not hear, like the mute who cannot speak. Truly, I am like one who does not hear, and in whose mouth is no retort. But it is for you, O Lord, that I wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. For I pray, only do not let them rejoice over me, those who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity, I am sorry for my sin. Those who are my foes without cause are mighty, and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good are my adversaries, because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Let us pray. God of our earthly pilgrimage, feed your Easter people with the bread of heaven, that we may hunger and thirst for righteousness until we reach our promised land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our next two readings come from the New Testament letters of John the Elder. First we'll hear from 1 John 3, verse 11, and then verses 14 through 16. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister 
are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Here is a prayer from a New Zealand prayer book. Jesus, we believe you. All we heard is true. You break the bread, we recognize you. You are the fire that burns within us. Use us to light the world. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. And here is our final reading for today from 2 John, verses 1 through 6. The elder, to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I was overjoyed to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we have been commanded by the Father. But now, dear lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning, let us love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard it from the beginning, you must walk in it. One time I was involved in a discussion about Jesus' theology of the kingdom. I stuck the word theology in that sentence to make it sound like it was more heady than it actually was. I did that because we Christians, me included, tend to make our conversations about ideas like the kingdom of God into discussions about theological abstractions. The thing is, Jesus never did that. If you look at Jesus' parables in the Gospels, many of them are explicitly about the kingdom of God. And these explicitly kingdom parables are all about ridiculously practical things. Oil in lamps, seeds, pigs, pearls, lost sons, wise and foolish builders, etc. Not an abstraction in sight. Maybe that's why it was so hard for people who heard them to understand. Jesus made it so obvious that many of them couldn't handle it. I don't know. That's just a theory. But the way of the kingdom is not hard to figure out. Someone in that discussion I referred to at the top said that they thought, we can't know yet what the kingdom will be like, or when it will come. But I think we can. The time of the kingdom of God is now, and the way of the kingdom of God is love. The imagery in the parables that Jesus uses describes the kind of love that he's talking about. Love that is invasive, that interrupts the everyday cavalier meanness and pettiness that define much of our lives. Love that overturns the greedy grasping of business as usual. Love that takes root in good soil and grows like a weed. Love that leavens the whole of life. Love that sacrifices but always has more to give, like a ridiculously generous master. Love that forgives with profligate extravagance. Love that keeps the door open even to those who told us to drop dead. That's what Jesus means when he talks about love. And that's the kind of love he taught to his disciples, one of whom was John the Elder, the apostle who wrote the Gospel of John and is thought by many to have also penned the three letters of John, along with the book of Revelation. Some people think that the writer of those later books was not the same guy. Maybe not, but whoever that later writer was had been thoroughly schooled by John the Elder to the point that he could pass on the teachings of Jesus as if they were being passed on by John the Elder himself. And the main teaching of Jesus that John, or John's disciple, sought to pass on is summarized in the passages we heard from his first and second letters. Love. The kind of love that Jesus explained so clearly, consistently, and passionately in the Gospels. John says he's writing to a dear lady. It may be a faithful, 
one of the many faithful women who were in leadership in the church in John's day, or John may be referring to the church itself. She who Jesus birthed through the apostles, the beloved for whom Jesus died and for whose sake he now lives and intercedes. John, by his own account, was simply restating what Jesus had always taught. Now, dear lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Let us love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. Jesus' command was, love one another. That may make it seem like that John verse was engaging in some kind of tautology, using a word in its own definition, as it were, but I don't think this is true. Jesus' commandment was to love. John says we should walk in that commandment, actually live it out. Love is not mostly a noun. Love is mostly, according to John, who got the command from Jesus, a verb. We aren't following Jesus' commandment if we are simply discussing love. We are following Jesus' commandment if we are loving invasively, interrupting the everyday cavalier meanness and pettiness that define much of our lives, overturning the greedy grasping of business as usual, leavening the whole of life with our sacrificial self-giving, and finding that, praise God, we always have more to give, like some ridiculously rich and equally ridiculously generous master. When we forgive with profligate extravagance, when we keep the door open even to the beloved one who told us to drop dead, then we are obeying Jesus' command, his only command. Thank you for listening. Temple Church continues to meet for worship at the corner of Unionville and Temple Roads in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. We move outside every summer. This year we're planning on moving outside a little early. Look for us in our pavilion across the street from the church building sometime in May. We'll be back with another episode next week. Until then, grace and peace to all. Cultivating cheerfulness, magnan <laughs> magnanimity. <laughs>